always feel bad about this. When people post these, hey, this is me. Who should I cosplay? Whoever you want to. Mm, yeah, it, Whoever you want to. I, I never say anything about that because at the end of the day, like, it might be somebody just starting. Merry Christmas, y'all. Um, yes, this is coming. Uh, I take this before. Does that uh, mean we've no. talked for three hours of Vader burning? Uh, almost an hour. Is it an hour? Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, yes, this is being released after December. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I cheat with this. So, I'm queuing things up because baby on the way. Anyway. Um, oh, I, I was here. No. Um, Not quite yet. Oh. He, he might be here by the time this, this drops. Maybe. Um, but yeah, what was I about to say? Um, oh, so oh, yeah, whole, people, what, what should I cosplay? Right, and it's like, I, I, I try to be, and the reason I don't ever say anything about this is because, like, I'm trying to be sensitive of the fact that it's probably somebody just starting out, yeah. you know, so it's like, I'm not trying to do the thing I hate, which is gatekeep, but in my mind, sometimes I'll be like, especially if it's somebody who's been cosplaying a minute, I'm like, yeah. you really don't have any... And this is also, because I, I also don't want to be that person we were talking about before, saying that, oh, you have to love the character to do it. Right. So I, I don't, I never voiced this thought because I don't want to go into those realms and I'm trying not to be. Mm -hmm. But I'd be like, are you, you mean to tell me you don't have a, a, a character you love that much? Or you, you don't? Nothing that interests you. Right. It, or, but or but see, that's the thing. So that goes kind of back to the, I think, the greatest struggle that we all have as being human beings is being honest. Yeah. Um, and some of that is um, even argumentative people, which, you know, we all have encountered that one friend that you can't ever say anything right with them. There's always got to be, that's just their personality. They yeah. always have to like, you know, be devil's advocate or whatever. Um, Y'all don't get paid to be devil's advocate. Let me just put that yeah, in there. Nobody's getting paid to do that. I Nobody. that, um, you know, we all want to get along mm -hmm. and we all want to be friendly and we all, you know, we're pack animals. So we want to have people around us, even if we, we choose those communities. Yeah. So I think that um, when people post things like that, at the heart of them, mm -hmm. they do know what they want to be. Yeah. But they aren't able yet to be honest with themselves mm -hmm. about what that is. Yeah. And, you know, even to a greater extent, that spreads into just our daily day lives. You know, we, yeah. we all have parts of our personality that we either repress it or we ignore it because we are concerned mm -hmm. that the pack won't be able to accept this thing. Yeah. And so when people post that, I'm always kind of like, I, I think the same thing that you do. Because mm -hmm. I'm always kind of like, no, you can be whatever you want to be. Right. So these are all great suggestions that people are making. However, I have found that it is difficult, it is more difficult to me anyway, to make a costume that I'm making simply because somebody else said I should. Yeah. Versus it's something that actually inspires me. And you know, right. maybe other people are able to work differently mm -hmm. from that. But I, I think usually when people post things like that, they have an idea. The, the whole reason that you want to cosplay is not because you saw other people wearing costumes. Mm -hmm. It's because there's something in your head that you know you want to make. Mm -hmm. right, and right. some part of your brain is telling you for some reason that you can't or you shouldn't. Right. Whether it be that, um, you know, a lot of these anime characters have a, like a quarter of a yard of fabric. Mm -hmm. Maybe you aren't ready yet to roll out of the house yeah. in a quarter of a yard of fabric and a giant sword. Mm -hmm. You know? And I think it's also like acceptance somewhere in there too. Mm -hmm. Like you want to... Because I, I, I had this a little bit, and I never voiced it, but it was like when I, when I did my first gender bend. Like, I didn't do it until I saw somebody else. And not that I feel like I needed permission, mm -hmm. but I guess subconsciously, because I, I, I didn't think of myself, oh, I don't know if somebody's going to accept this. I don't know if people are going to like it. Mm -hmm. but, so I, that was never a deliberate thought, but maybe it was just in there and I didn't right. acknowledge it. So right. it wasn't until I saw somebody else, uh, big shout out to Eric Scott Smith, Scott Smith, I didn't mean to put the plural on there, um, who, he he was the first person I saw do a gender bend Psylocke, and Psylocke, that's, that's, that's my boo right there, that's my, my waifu, really? waifu, yeah, I don't know if that's, I don't know if I pronounced it properly. Probably the one character that I hate, hate slightly Psylocke. more, the multiple man. <laughs> oh, dang. Yeah. Don't start, we've got to talk for another whole, whole half hour, because like, I don't, Okay, wait, I take that back. Mm. She might actually be ahead of Megan in my hate. Mm. And then the fact that they were on a team together for a minute. Mm. Wow. 
we, we might break the record on our length on this because I, 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 I don't have a i'm not mad at anything you just said i'm just intrigued because like okay why 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 the hate why? for multiple men and why the hate for megan useless. oh that's your all three of them useless useless psylocke only became cool when she got the other body mm, yeah and a little bit of mm, about mm, yeah yeah back when she was running around and like purple flowy ridiculous mm -hmm. costuming yeah she was like she just had to be the the resident telepath yeah even the mojo eye like, thing was not even a cool concept for me yeah. i was just like uh no yeah because I, I came in on psylocke after she turned into ninja psylocke yeah so, ninja psylocke is cool yeah i have but been, yeah just regular old betsy yeah i had got been, nothing for it. i did go back and read because i've been catching up on everything i, I basically started at the I, mean, I do i do have the dark phoenix saga but i, I started at the mutant massacre and just worked my way up so okay. basically everything from there up until the point where i started reading the comics which was right before the blue and gold team okay started so basically just catching up on all that all of that so basically the got abject everything. foolishness back you mm -hmm. that, <laughs> so i got all of that so i got to finally experience okay this is what happened with yeah, her this is how I, she turned into i this. when i came in on the x-men it was probably about a year before they introduced New Mutants. And okay. so mm -hmm. I came in um, during the whole bit where they were off planet with the Star Jammers yeah. and they were fighting the... Um... The Brood? Yeah, the okay. Brood. I came in during the Brood talk. Okay. Mm, and I, um, I just read that. I'm then I read like, like a little ago, bit yeah. before it, but I was never... I kind of came in on the second team. Mm. And I was never a huge fan of any of the originals. Mm. Um, some of them grew on me over time. Like, I kind of have a soft spot for blue people. So, <laughs> shout out to, you know, Beast and Nightcrawler. Mm. They, they, yeah. They've always been my favorite characters. Right, right. But I never cared about Cyclops. I think his brother is way cooler. Yeah, yeah. And he's one of those underused, underrated characters. I was like, yeah, yeah you know, Havoc has got it going on, but they never give him any love. Exactly, exactly. And, there's, but then, you there know. There was even a line where I think they were trying to figure out what to do with Havoc because he walked in on some conversation he wasn't supposed to walk in on. And uh, Storm was leading at the time. And mm -hmm. Silent was like, should we kill him? Try that if Dang, you'd like. Yeah, right? <laughs> you, you can go try. Yeah. But I think he was even cooler when his powers were out of control when he was wearing the suppression suit. Right, right. That was like angry. Angry Havoc was cool. Yeah. I, I never I, did get his girlfriend, though. Yeah. I did. I found out recently, like, he actually fought the Hulk at least once in one. Because he, cool. he used his, uh, his cosmic energy, his radiant energy absorbing power. Because that, that's what, I guess, what fuels his mm. plasma blast. And that happen to be the same energy that fuels Hulk being Hulk and he somewhere out there there's a website that has the science mm -hmm. of different superheroes abilities and mm -hmm. it's very very interesting I want to go, go find that, that yeah that, go, that go sound, find it because it's beautiful. very very interesting but like there's characters like I I'm, I'm a huge I'm an X-Men fan that's my comic fandom same, same. um and so like characters like I never liked Cannonball I liked him better it took me probably 10 15 years to be like you know what wait a minute Mm. He, he yeah. might actually be kind of cool. I, re yeah, I think the same thing for me there because I came in when he was uh, leading X Force after Cable just kind of started doing his own thing. Mm -hmm. So like Ex Executioner Song was my first, okay. um, my first crossover and like would probably always be my favorite because it was my first. So seeing him be the leader there, I was like, okay, he's pretty. I mean, he wasn't never my favorite, but I was right. like, okay, he's pretty dope. But going back and reading like the first few issues of New Mutants and seeing that gangly, awkward. Yeah. Bot, uh, bots the haircut, box, but, looking, yeah. uh, looking like Giles' little brother. Like, I'm like, oh, um, is this the same guy? Yeah. yeah. That, well, but, I don't know. Like, the whole beginnings of the New Mutants is kind of like X Men 3.0. Mm -hmm. um, that was all a bit weird. And then they had all these kind of cool, weird characters. And that was kind of when we first got our real taste of like Mojo World. And yeah. I don't know, I, I feel like there's always been all these characters that are kind of on the periphery yeah. in the X books. So it could have been really awesome. And when mm -hmm. people started talking about, you know, what does the next iteration of the Marvel Universe look like? Mm -hmm. I was out here advocating for a Star Jammers movie, y'all. Because mm -hmm. I was like, if they like are able like to idea. take Guardians of the Galaxy and make people love, which was what was really like, CD rate Yeah, because I, I didn't know I didn't know anything about Guardians of the Galaxy until they threw and 
I had to warm up to Rocket because yes. I was introduced to Rocket through Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Yeah. And I was mad that they put what I considered at the time to be a nobody character. And Why we game. got this walking, talking squirrel, y'all? Right. <laughs> I was about to correct you say raccoon, but I see nope. where you, I see where yeah, you went with nope. that. I, 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 would, I would be like, mm. I see where you went with that. You did, I, yeah. I'm, I'm nope. with you. I'm with nope. you. Um, but yeah, like, why is he in this game when y'all took out Gambit, y'all took out Sal, y'all took out Rogue, y'all took out all the characters I love, and go throw this character in there because you just trying to push him? I warmed up to him, but that was my feeling at the time. So yeah, yeah if they could, yeah, if they can do that, Star Jammers well, would be amazing. Because the Star Jammers, they've got all these really cool crossovers with all these characters that, like I said, are on the periphery. You never really got to like a good, like they've got a lot of characters, which you know they really probably kind of overpowered Mary Sue's. But like, mm-hmm. I always like Lila Cheney. Okay, yeah. So yeah. she's out here. She's a rock star. She can teleport from here to the other side of the universe better, better and take I the whole know. building with her teleport better than Nightcrawler? Yeah. I mean, you she know. She ain't got to see where she's going. She ain't got to see where she's going. She can do birth, birth, uh, she can do north, south, east, west with equal. <laughs> I mean, hey, it's a thing. I love Kirk, but we all know he's got yeah, issues with, he's right. got issues with magnetic poles. That's a thing. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, she can actually jump whole planets. Yeah. And take everybody and some right. equipment in the house with her. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the Star Jammers, they've got all these really cool kind of alien characters. You know, you've got some more of that funky Summers family tree action going on. So, which we can, which we couldn't get because they never got that right. So what? What well, this doesn't make the, the brain Corsair in because his son don't. It yeah. doesn't matter. It's the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, we won't yeah. even talk about. We want to talk about my gatekeeping efforts when people. That's their only experience with the Marvel Universe. Mm-hmm. I try Ooh. really hard Ooh. not to be that person. Uh, same, same. Like, I, but, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to have that sensitivity to it because on one hand, I feel like those of us who know. Three Saturday morning cartoons and a bunch of movies doesn't make a lot of knowledge there, y'all. Yeah. I had somebody that told me, and I, I, I tell myself every time that I'm not going to get in these X character versus Y character arguments on Facebook, mm-hmm. and I keep letting it happen. Mm-hmm. This guy's going to tell me, no, it doesn't work that way. And I'm like, yeah, it does. And here's the page where there was a whole conversation with Forge mm-hmm. where they talked about it. Mm-hmm. Do you know dude told me that my canon reference was too old? To, what the? F- I was like, well, little boy, that's new. You tell me who we're gonna where the cutoff is, and I'll work from there. I was like, it was a it's canon conversation. Canon, canon and too old is like an oxymoron. What the heck? I'm like, it's a canon conversation. Right. It happened. It happened. It happened. And it's. My... And it wasn't even a thing that was retcon. Now Marvel is horrific about. There will be a conversation about how a thing or a power or some historical point that it did occur Mm -hmm. and then it's just never discussed again right and then later on they'll try to do something else that's not really a retcon necessarily Mm -hmm. it's just we're gonna hope that y'all aren't still reading 20 years later and don't remember like thor that uh, we told you like like if thor throws his hammer like he loses his powers until he gets it back not not loses powers but he gets weaker or whatever yeah, you know, it's just like, oh, we forgot that we told you that. And, yeah. and sometimes I think that they truly forgot because, yeah. you know, you'll be 15 writers in now. And, you know, that might have been a Chris Claremontism. Yeah, or like, or, when the now I'm Team Wolverine all day long. Don't, mm-hmm. don't get me wrong. But I will always stand up for Cyclops. Cyclops. Mm-hmm. I'm getting my characters mixed up. I will always stand up for Cyclops because hate him or love him. Everybody respected him. Everybody followed him. Even Wolverine. Even Wolverine is on record saying, "Like, dude, you stopped being the man I followed a long time ago." Meaning he had that respect for him. Mm-hmm. There is a so whenever anybody tries to not put some respect on on, on Scott Summers' name, I point them back to this issue where. Wolverine was mouthing off to Cyclops. Cyclops got pissed off and he backhanded. Whoops. It's okay. <laughs> he backhanded Wolverine and lived to tell about it. Okay. But the thing that people don't realize, I guess maybe they didn't realize at the time, maybe they hadn't fleshed out Wolverine yet. You can't backhand Wolverine without breaking your hand because that, know, that like, skull that, that's is at a man to him. So it was like, Cyclops should have had a broke hand, but he lived and fractured no bones. But but who but who can do that to Wolverine and live to tell the story though? It's a very short list. Right. So like, I bring that up anytime somebody tries to to throw shade at Cyclops. Like I, he's. I've never. I've never not had respect for the character. I yeah. just find him extremely boring. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I agree. I, I I still I always felt like he never really had that moment where he. 
I hate to say they broke him down and he became something else, mm -hmm. but kind of no. Yeah. He's pretty much been, he's like the wanna, dad character. Yeah, I want to say they kind of did that um, right after A versus X. Like he kind of was like a, almost almost a villain of sorts, like a, like a revolutionary or whatever. Like mm -hmm. he, they kind of did that with him, but they, he still was the same. I want him to like lose his crap. Mm. I want him to like, I don't know, accidentally kill some people and then go walk about and pretend that he's not himself for a year or two. Yeah. I think he, it wouldn't hurt. Because he was always afraid of going, because every time he uses his powers, he's holding them back because he's afraid of hurting people. Yeah, I think he should just let that go. Just let it go. Just let it go. I'm, I I had to fight to start singing uh, Let It Go just now. It's all right. I think he should just let it go. Mm. Don't hold it back anymore. Don't hold back. Just go be you. Yeah. Because I always felt like, see, this. now we're having some other conversation. I always felt like he was too busy trying to be the leader of the x-men mm. it's like who is scott summers do we know yeah we don't like it's it, that's who he is leader of the x-men is who he is he never got a chance I, and, he, I, and he tried and he tried to live another life and he couldn't he realized like i think the, during the whole time where he was married to um a madeline, Pryor, madeline Pryor. And they, and wait real him. madeline or the scroll or the composite the composite phoenix force what are we talking about I think I'm talking about uh, real Madeline, the one who is the clone of Jean Grey that's did, a sinister. We, but yeah, but didn't, wasn't she a scroll? I don't think so, but I'm intrigued now. So now I'm going to go do my homework soon as I get home and f figure that out. I think um, there is a Madeline prior that was actually like an amalgamation of the Phoenix Force. Mm -hmm. And then I think that there was one that was a scroll too. That I I'm, might just be mixing some stuff up. And, because during those two seconds, wait, because wasn't she... Didn't Madeline become the Goblin Queen for two seconds? And then she, yeah, and then she died at the end of Inferno. Yeah. But then there was a, what you're making me think about, and I don't know if this is what you're referring to, but there was, remember like mid 2000 something, there was these books called The End, like you had Spider-Man, The End, Wolverine, The End, mm -hmm. um, X-Men, The End. And basically like, it was like a story arc, is it like okay. that whole thing. Naked Genosha Nate's mom, Madeline? I don't, okay. That's outside of my memory there, so I, I'll, I'll have to go look that up. I don't. You might be. You might be talking about some issues I never got to. Well, I might just. It, hey, at this point, it's been a very long time of reading these books, and yes, I might have just all this stuff be mix them yeah, and yeah. be like, wait, did that actually happen? Did I pick that up? Is that from a movie? Yeah. Is that some other character? Like, yeah. But yeah. Am I, am I confusing Rachel with an iteration of Jean Grey with an yeah. iteration of Madeline? We Meyer? all could be. Uh, I think they. I think they were doing that too. Back to, back to the whole like movie thing, like. I, you know, like you, I try not to be that person. Well, yeah. if you read the comments, I try not to be that person. Right. But at the same time, if you are somebody who's only watched the movies, you can only go so long before you realize that before somebody in your circle tells you that the movies are not the original source material. So I can. Like, I, what are you even thinking about Deadpool at this point? If you watched Origins, then you watched the Deadpool movies, what do you think happened? I. Even though he alludes. To his own bad portrayal in the right, first film. Right, right. What, I mean, like, what do you think happened between Origins and now? Like, what are you thinking happened with that character? Uh, are you are you at all concerned that the arm knives have gone away and that he can no longer teleport? Apparently. No, I'm just. Or like, are you just I, oblivious? I'm, just, I'm, I'm really just like somebody <laughs> else is doing this and we are like oh. we're, we're literally just hey we're not thinking about it. okay that, that that's your explanation for what yeah. is, what so is I'm, happening I'm, I'm, All right. I'm seriously All suspending right. my disbelief on that because that's the only way it freaking works well um, yeah but you know that that is I mean that's part and parcel of film yeah, yeah. But, and you know I, I completely understand why it's done that way yeah. um you know film is is for a wider audience yeah. you know when we talk about comics and books even to an extent they are um geared and targeted for a very particular group of people right. whereas i think when they go out to make a film you know i hate to say it but they're kind of hunting for the least common denominator yeah you're right yeah. so there has to be you know there's just some stuff that you're gonna have to let it go yeah. Because the, the general populace doesn't have time or the inclination or the interest about that being in Curious Thing mm -hmm. to even go back far enough to even understand what's happening here. So a lot of times you have to kind of drop in the middle and you have to kind of make these, um, I hate to say two-dimensional, but these kind of two-dimensional characters yeah. that will get people immediately invested. And I think um, one of the things that I struggle with 
because I've never, I've always been a Marvel girl, but there's always been some DC characters that I had some interest in. And there's been yeah. times in my life, like um, when I was in undergrad, I was really into the Teen Titans. Mm. That was like my book. Okay. And, um, you know, but later in my life, I've kind of shied away from the DC books. But I think one of the things that's a difference, I think, between the DC and the Marvel books is I'm not sure that DC has quite gotten the hang of this immediate investment. Mm. I don't think people necessarily um, go to a DC film mm -hmm. and find that character that you're like, yeah, yeah, that's that's my character. Gotcha. And they're immediately invested in the same way. I think um, they can be enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Although there have been a couple of times where I've been like, what is happening here? But I think the same thing about some of the Marvel films. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, I like Oscar Isaac. Yeah. Then I'm just like, what is happening here? Oh my here? goodness. Yeah, I, I, love, I love him, but he never should have been Apocalypse. I was never afraid of Apocalypse. I never, he sounded like Stewie Griffin a few times. I'm like, and, and, and it I think. It was just like, what? It was, it was, I don't know. It was like one of those left turns that you're like, why? And it, but you know what? Sometimes I always wonder if it's a strategic mood mm -hmm. to kind of make fans get so divorced mm -hmm. from a franchise mm -hmm. that when we come out with the reworking, mm -hmm. you're now far enough away from the thing that you were loving about it that I can more easily introduce you mm -hmm. to this new angle on it. Yeah, I can see that. I don't always agree I, with I don't, it, I but don't, I agree. I don't know necessarily that's always quite so intentional, but mm -hmm. ugh. And, and that I, was painful. I've had my, but I, I feel the same way about Justice League. Justice League, mm -hmm. I'm sitting there and I'm just like, I'm really, really wanting to love this, y'all. And I even to. went twice just to make sure. Because that's who I am. Then. I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'm still wanting to love it. Yeah. I'm loving parts. You reminded me, you reminded me of a thought I had as, as far as with the first X-Men movie. Because on one hand, I loved it because we finally got an X-Men movie. But on the other hand, I hated it because I'm like, what the heck are y'all doing with these characters? Mm -hmm. And I think... Maybe we had to get X-Men to appreciate Avengers when it came along. Like, we had to know how bad it could be before... Or maybe, like, you know how they... The Avengers movies, they they still did some craziness with some of the costumes. Like, of course, yeah. like Scarlet Witch don't look nothing like Scarlet Witch. No, no. Things like that. But I think we had to see all black leather X-Men... Yeah. To know, to in order to like, because there's, there's a theory out there that maybe if we got the original costumes first, people would have been like, "Oh, this is too campy. This is too blah 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 blah." Well, I was gonna say that. I mean, that really is kind of my take on the Scarlet Witch costume mm -hmm. is that it it has never aged particularly well. Right. Yeah. I, I would, but I, would, I also yeah. think that there was probably this press to make Elizabeth Olsen very attractive for that particular target audience mm -hmm. of young females yeah and the scarlet witch no matter what her age was supposed to be in the books mm -hmm. she never read as young yeah she no, always no, no, read right. as, as a very mature character yeah. so i think just you know ditching the costume and all of it i right. think and you know now now we're about to get wandavision which god bless america what's up with that title y'all every time <laughs> i see it, it makes my eye twitch um <laughs> i'm just like this is it this is all we can come up with and then I'm like, surely that's just a working title. But then it's all the steady. press keeps, yeah, it's still yeah. there. And I'm like, yeah. Oh. Yeah. okay. Um, but I don't know. I think I wasn't as bothered by the X-Men costumes only because, you know, we went through that period in the early night. Well, not early nineties, like the late nineties, early aughts. Where basically to be an X-Men, I'm pretty convinced that you showed up and they gave you a baggie with like some patches on it. Mm -hmm. And were like, welcome to the team, man. Yeah. Because yeah. people were wearing street clothes mm. with an X patch on anything. You saw jogging suits, you saw jackets, you saw whatever. And I think we had been through so many iterations of like the blue team, the gold team. Mm -hmm. We were in space. We're all wearing what was, whatever was available on this hijacked ship that we stole mm -hmm. that I think I was okay with it. Like it, it just yeah. was like the X Men have on some new costumes. Yeah. Again. True. But you know, I went through that. I'm, I'm weird because like one of the, when I first kind of got away from consistently reading the book. Mm -hmm. Sorry, y'all, but I'll admit it, it was like the whole Rob Liefeld stuff mm -hmm. because I actually found the art difficult to look at. What um what um what time period was that? 
Because mm. I probably know what you're talking about, but I don't. I couldn't. It was probably match the early the aughts, late '80s, when suddenly Cable wasn't just a big dude; he was an enormous dude like, with a teeny head. Yeah, and like, just these really just big, these ill-defined shoulders. features mm. and these tiny hands and the art. And it wasn't just him; it became um, and you know, comic book art is like music. There there will be periods of time where I think companies look and they go, oh. The readers are liking this. Mm -hmm. We should do more of that. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing you know, you got similar art popping up in in all books. Like, I remember we went through this period where the X-Men all seemed to be wearing platform boots. It's a minor thing, but it seemed very weird. They all had on these boots that had these giant, really stiff treads on them. Mm -hmm. They all looked like they were wearing those, um, what were the the boots that um, Riddick wore in, in the first Pitch Black and then everybody went out and bought them? They were like these like engineering about, books. Yeah. But there was this period where every book, all of the characters suddenly had on these big, clunky, mechanic-looking boots. And I was yeah. like, what is this about? So we went through this period where in all the X books, all the characters were just these grotesque <laughs> representations of human bodies. Like all the female characters had waists that were like this yeah, big. And, they and then they had these huge. enormous breasts. Hmm. And their legs were like 10 feet long. And I actually found the art. Are we supposed to be accurate to that? Right. And I found the art difficult to look at yeah. and so i kind of literally shied away from reading the books because i found the art disturbing but yeah we also went through this period where i think they tried to make all the characters more human mm-hmm. and they maybe tried to give them a lot more depth than they had and so you started getting stuff about like gambit's backstory mm-hmm. and his relationship with mr sinister yeah. and stuff like that and it was interesting but I kind of wanted to go back to kind of like the villain of the week. Yeah. You yeah. Know? 